Hi everyone, it's Allison here again on June 21st, 2024, with another special entry, today's being my review of The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. For those of you listening for the first time, I'm Allison Tandry, co-founder and current administrator of DIY Salvation on YouTube, home to the resolution of the mind, also known as TROM. I post these journal entries so I can not only take a break from posting content that's strictly TROM-related, put TROM into a context that goes beyond the works of Dennis Stevens, and engage viewers on a more personal level. My entries though insightful and informative, are not absolutely necessary for the understanding of TROM. Though some of them may help you when discussing TROM with others. I'm going to tell you about this book The Four Agreements which I've read many times over. I'll tell you what's beneficial about it, along with a few words of caution as far as the Toltec philosophy that it's based on is concerned, and evaluate the book from the perspective of TROM technology. Let's get started. What truly shines about the four agreements is that I personally know Christians, Scientologists, Traumers and others of various spiritual backgrounds who have read and enjoyed this book. It's based on the Toltec philosophy, which comes from Mexico centuries ago. Don Miguel Ruiz is apparently the go-to authority on the Toltec philosophy for modern humans who wish to implement the fundamentals into their lives for their own spiritual growth and enhancement. This is not the only book of his that I have read, and I've also read some of the works of Don Miguel Ruiz Jr., whom I've also corresponded with a bit online. The main idea behind the four agreements is that life has forced you into making many agreements that influence your thoughts and actions. We are raised a certain way as what Ruiz refers to as a domesticated human, and as a result of this domestication, we start to domesticate ourselves and others. We have certain beliefs. When others act in a way that violate these beliefs, which Ruiz calls a book of laws, we try to enforce our way of thinking on other people so that everyone eventually acts just the way we want them to. And others do this to us with their own set of rules or laws. It's the battle of beliefs, he calls it. Ultimately, these rules we enforce upon ourselves and attempt to enforce on others limits our way of thinking, limits our perceptions, and most of all, keeps us from being the happy, authentic versions of ourselves that we could be. But you can change that by waging war against the liar inside of your mind that whispers these beliefs to you on a continual basis. We can break these agreements and return to our authentic selves. It's a sort of battle between you and your mind. You do this by adopting a new set of agreements that assists you in returning to your authentic self. And the more proficient you are in following these four agreements, the weaker the limiting, domestic agreements become. The four agreements are Be impeccable with your word, speak with integrity and honesty, and avoid gossip and lies. Don't take anything personally. Don't let others' opinions and actions affect your self-worth and emotions. Don't make assumptions, communicate clearly and ask questions, and don't assume you know what others think or feel. Always do your best, do your best in every situation, and don't judge yourself or others. From the perspective of a trauma and a former Scientologist, what I get from all this is that it's a code of conduct which, if you embrace it, will keep your case off of you, so to speak. In layman's terms, this means that the upsetting aspects of your mind won't have so much power over you if you live your life in this way. That's the intent of the Four Agreements. Not unlike other spiritual practices, it's a way to become happier and stay that way. The Four Agreements can be better understood the more you understand the fundamental concepts of the Toltec philosophy. Ideas like you are not the voice in your head, but the one listening to it that we set ourselves up for failure and self-invalidation because of this idea that there is some sort of ideal of human perfection that we will never reach. I'm particularly fond of the theory that one should disbelieve what others tell you, as well as what you tell yourself, because lies will shatter in the face of disbelief, and the truth won't, and if you practice this policy of disbelief long enough, all the lies will shatter and only the truth will remain. Now it is true that, 
strictly speaking, you are not the voice in your head, but the one listening to it. You are not your mind. You are a spiritual being. There was an exercise I did a long time ago on the first course I took in Scientology wherein I closed my eyes and pictured a cat. Then I was told that the cat is a picture in my mind, and the one looking at it was me, the spiritual being. However, there is a danger in dismissing this voice in your head to be some sort of separate entity which you now must start fighting. It puts you in a game's condition between you and your mind. Dennis Stevens says that you will never win against the mind, because inside of it lie your very own intentions which he calls postulates. He also warns that once you categorize something in your mind as not being yourself, that you lose control of it. That first reference comes from Dennis Stevens's original book titled The Resolution of Mind a Games Manual, and that second reference comes from one of the 90s lectures titled Dissociation if you want to study what I've just paraphrased in context. Now don't worry about this idea that you can't win the war against your mind. While it is true, I don't mean to paint you up a hopeless situation. Just because you can never win the war against your mind, doesn't mean you can't just end it. And that's exactly what Traum Therapy does. Instead of trying to win against the mind, you just end the game you are playing with it without either side having to win or lose. You can learn how to do this with the videos, lectures, and the ebook we provide for free on this channel. Now I've stated before in one of my earlier journal entries, the one on self-improvement versus spiritual freedom, that this idea of trying to turn yourself into something perfect leads you further into the trap and is not a path to spiritual freedom at all. So Ruiz is correct that trying to be perfect is a sure path to misery. What I don't like is how he says you are already perfect. And I kind of get where he's going with this in that as a spiritual being you are already complete and you really don't need anything, but on the human level, if you consider yourself perfect already, this can lead to some complacent attitudes wherein you might decide you need not even correct some of your worst behavior. You can think of yourself as perfect all you want, and it might just be true, in a certain light. But I would strongly advise against trying to assert this to others, as you will almost certainly start many arguments over this point. Lastly, while it is good to question as many things as you can in life, constantly re-evaluating your beliefs, if you disbelieve everything and everyone constantly and never assume anything to be true, you may wind up with absolutely no stability in your thinking, and quite confused. So temper some of the aspects of Toltec wisdom with what you know to be true, as well as some common sense, realize the intent behind what Ruiz is trying to say rather than taking everything he says as gospel truth which you must follow to the letter, and you will be fine studying Toltec philosophy. That said, as far as the four agreements used as a guideline for moral conduct, you really can't go wrong with them and you can practice such without them interfering with your practice of Traum, Scientology, Christianity, Buddhism, or any other spiritual practice whose ultimate aim is to make you and the others around you happier. Practicing these four agreements is not at all required for the practice of Traum, nor will it interfere with such practice. On a wholly personal level, as opposed to acting as a Traum practitioner and instructor, I do recommend reading this book. I'm Alison Tandry. We are DIY Salvation. Don't just use your mind. Resolve it.